Hello, friends. We're here again on Key to Science to discuss another interesting physics topic. Earth's shape is spherical, and it pulls things to its center. What if we dig a tunnel through the center of the Earth and leave something in that big hole? What will be the properties of this object's motion? Will it get stuck at the center, or will it go through it and reach the other end? Will it burst out into the sky at the other end? Let's jump into this topic. We know very little about what is inside the Earth. It is thought that there are melted substances inside the solid crust of the Earth. Earth's radius is 6,400 kilometers. If we could dig a tunnel through the center of the Earth, we could know better. However, in physics, our concern is what will be the properties of motion of an object that falls through the center of the Earth. We will simplify the phenomenon to avoid complicacy for now. We'll ignore the air resistance and we'll consider the Earth as a perfect sphere. We know that as a sphere, the Earth attracts things on and around it to the Earth's center. The value of gravitational force is highest on the Earth's surface. Therefore, gravitational acceleration, g, is highest. If we jump into this tunnel, in the beginning at one end of the tunnel, gravitational acceleration will be 9.8 meters per second squared. That means the more we will approach the center of the Earth, we'll be gaining more velocity. And in each second, the increment of velocity will be 9.8 meters per second. To understand this phenomenon, we'll consider Earth as a collection of void spheres. Let's assume the Earth consists of five spheres. Four of them are hollow spheres, and the smallest one is solid. Let's name them A, B, C, D, and E. When we are standing on the surface of sphere A, all of the spheres A, B, C, D, and E will be pulling us to the common center. Sphere A will be pulling us with a force Fa. Sphere B will be pulling us with a force Fb. The respective forces will be Fc, Fd, and Fe. Therefore, the Earth will be pulling us with a force F1, which is a sum of all these individual forces, and the direction of the force will be to the center of the Earth. As all the spheres will be pulling us to their centers, force F1 is quite big. Now, when we'll come to the surface of shell B after passing shell A behind, the resultant force on us exerted by shell A will be zero. FA1 will be canceled out by minus FA1. FA2 will be canceled out by minus FA2. FA3 will be canceled out by minus FA3, and so on. Only the remaining spheres B, C, D, and E will be pulling us to their centers. As the overall mass of the whole sphere has decreased now, the exerted force on us will be smaller, which is F2, which is some of the remaining individual forces, and this F2 is less than F1. At this point, though the value of force has decreased, the velocity will still be increasing, as force F2 is still acting on us. The increment of velocity will be smaller than before. Let's assume the velocity is still increasing at a rate of 7.2 meters per second. Let's get deeper. Now we'll reach the surface of shell C after passing shell B behind. In this case, the resultant force on us by the shells A and B will be zero. FB1 will be canceled out by minus FB1. FB2 will be canceled out by minus FB2. FB3 will be canceled out by minus FB3, and so on. As a result, the total force exerted on us by shell A and shell B will be zero. Their attractions will no longer influence our motion. Only the shells C, D, and E will be pulling us to the centers. As the overall mass has decreased again, 
the attraction force will be smaller than before. Let's assume that force is F3. Here, the force F3 is less than F2, which is less than F1. Therefore, the acceleration will be smaller than before, but still, the velocity will be increasing, as there are some attraction forces still acting. Let's assume that the velocity is increasing at a rate of 5.7 meters per second. This way, when we reach the center of shell E, all of the forces exerted on us will cancel each other. Therefore, at the center, we will feel that no more forces are acting on us. Now, as there are no more forces pulling us to any direction, will we be stuck there? No. We should not forget here that though at the center there are no more forces acting on us, we are not at rest. We have reached the center with an increasing velocity. Maybe the rate of increment of velocity was decreasing gradually, but the velocity was still increasing continuously. This way, when we'll get to the center, the force on us will be zero, but we'll reach there with a maximum velocity. From Newton's theories, we know that if there is no force acting on an object, the object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will be moving with the same motion. Therefore, at the center, as there is no force acting on us, we'll keep moving with the velocity we have gained up to this point. We'll pass through the center of the Earth due to the inertia. What's next? At the very moment, we'll pass the center. The corresponding spheres will be pulling us from behind. Gradually, larger spheres will be pulling us back. This way, we will be slowed down by the attraction, hence there will be negative acceleration. All of these forces are just equal and opposite to the previous forces, those that were pulling us to the center. Therefore, with this velocity and negative acceleration, We'll just reach the other end of the tunnel. When we are at the end of the tunnel, our velocity will be zero again. Therefore, from one end to another end, we will reach the center with increasing velocity and will reach the other end with decreasing velocity. Here, from the beginning to the center, the potential energy of us will be converted to kinetic energy. And then again, from the center to the other end, the kinetic energy will decrease which will be converted to potential energy again. Therefore, we'll just reach the other end of the tunnel, not more than that. At this moment, if some of my foreign friends pull me aside, then I'll just reach the country of that other end of the tunnel safely. If there is nobody to pull me aside, well then all the incidents that took place before will be taking place again, but in the opposite direction we'll start moving to the center with increasing speed. We'll reach the center with the highest speed. We will cross the center due to kinetic inertia. And from that moment, the velocity will start decreasing due to the opposite pull. At some point, we will reach the end from where we started. If someone does not pull me aside even at this moment, then the whole journey will just keep repeating. We'll be moving from end to end for eternity. I hope you already have understood the type of motion. It'll be nothing but simple harmonic oscillation. Calculate the time period quickly and write it in the comments section.